What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So there's a torch directly below me. I've been doing a lot of Thomcraft research. I've been trying to get to the point where we unlock the Eldritch Epiphany tab, and we've gotten there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the torch is below me because I my stomach was suddenly gurgling very strangely, and I was making goo. Ew. Yeah, I was making goo on the ground, so I put a torch below me that got rid of the goo and prevented any more from appearing there. The flux flu stuff. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to get my warp up. So I remember from Agrarian Skies too, like munching on zombie brains or whatever gives you warp, but it turns out it's only temporary warp, and I don't think that's the kind of warp that you need in order to unlock the Eldritch tab. So I've gone through the book, and I have... Uh, pretty much unlocked everything that I could find that has warp. Yeah, some of it is not a lot. This says mostly harmless. And then some of it, let's see, is atomic tinkering. I unlocked one that said, like, very dangerous or something. I don't remember where that one was now. Maybe not here, not here. Maybe under artifice? Forbidden Knowledge Miner. I can't remember where it was. Moderate? Yeah. Well, anyway, as you can see, I've gone through and I've unlocked a few things here. Things that I don't even know what they are. I've just been going through and clicking the ones that I can just purchase the research and just doing a lot of research. Like this first tab right here. I went through and I tried unlocking everything. Even this one where I can do research duplication, which doesn't even matter. Since, uh, yeah, single player. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we got the Eldritch tab unlocked, finally. This is what I was trying to go for. And now that we have the Eldritch Epiphany unlocked, we can do Void Metal. So Void Metal is one of the items that is required for doing the Draconic Evolution stuff. So in order to make Void Metal, we need a Void Seed. Click for research. So yeah, we can make Void Seeds. Uh, how do I go back? Can I go back? I don't know if I can go back. Anyway, yeah, so once we get the Void Seeds, we can throw in the Crucible with eight Metallum, which is pretty easy. I think that's just two Iron Ingots, and we get the Void Metal Ingot back. Well, I didn't actually know that you could craft this, but apparently you can. Uh, what I did is I went around. Oh, I guess we should go outside so we can see the map properly since they have Cave Mode turned on. All right, so what I did... Where are we? We are over here somewhere. This is us. I went over to this area right here by our quarry area. And this has one of those, whatever they are, the thing that I destroyed that has <laughs> the floating pillar. You know what? Instead of me just trying to fail at explaining what that is, let's just fly over there real quick. It's the portal, I think, to like the Eldritch Dimension or whatever. It's things that I've never done before, but it's kind of creepy stuff. Yeah, this thing right here. Uh, it's got like... <laughs> it's got spooky guys that have like stuff coming out of their face and they're looking at the sinister node or whatever and if you aggro them they start making uh knights eldritch knights or something um so anyway <laughs> yeah i went over there with some what are these called soul vials okay here they are crimson knight and Crimson Cleric. Those are the names of those mobs. Yeah, I went over there with some soul vials and I snatched them up. I do believe in Mine Factory Reloaded, they are not allowed to be captured with the Safari Net. However, with Ender IO, you can capture them. I've even captured a Wisp. So we can take uh, any one of these three and make ourselves a spawner with them, which is. I assume we can, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. So the reason why we even want to do this is Crimson Knights are the only ones, if yeah, Void Seed, the Crimson Knights are the only ones uh, that can drop Void Seeds. I didn't know there was a way that you could craft this, but apparently this just unlocked, now that I got that research, previous to me unlocking that, it said this was the only way to get the Void Seed. So that's what I did. I went and I captured one of these so we could spawn in a lot. Now, if we can just spawn these in and kill them with a 20% chance of collecting void seeds, I think that's going to be the preferred method. Not only that, but you can see all the different things they are dropping, like knowledge fragments at a 10% rate. That's not too bad. Uh, there's this crimson cult armor they drop. I'm not sure how good that is, to be honest. Uh, let's let this cycle through and I'll hold down shift to stop it. Yeah, Crimson Colt Boots. I mean, we get some V discount from that stuff, I guess. I've 
actually collected a little bit of this. They're very damaged armors. What is this book? Crimson Rites. Book filled with strange symbols. Okay, yeah, if we go over to the AE system right now. Yeah, I've killed a couple of those guys when I was trying to collect them in the soul vials. And they did draw off some of this stuff. So we do have this one that has warping one on it. I really don't know what that even means. But this one does have a V discount. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we haven't made any Thomcraft armor. We really haven't made anything besides the iron capped wooden wand or whatever. The really OP wand that we made uh, right from the very start. But anyway, what I'm curious to see is if we can make a Crimson Knight powered spawner. I am very interested in doing that. Um... That and the Wisp one. That'll help us get all of that essence and stuff later on. So the Powered Spawner, I can't remember. Yeah, we just need to put in Jassassin's Head uh, with some Electrical Steel, some Vibrant Crystals, and a Z-Logic Controller, which was a Slice and Splice with some stuff. Cool. Let me go ahead and get some things done here, guys. I'm going to make that Powered Spawner. We will use the, the Soul Thingy Medoodler over here, the Soul Binder to put the Crimson Knight soul into a broken spawner, and then we should be able to make a powered spawner. So yeah, let me get on that, guys, and we'll be right back. Cool, so now that we have the powered spawners made, the next step is to put a broken spawner with the soul vial that contains the mob soul and the soul binder. So I've already done that with our first two, so we have the Crimson Knight and the Wisp. Uh, let's do that with the Crimson Cleric and this broken spawner that was a cave spider. We have to give it a little experience. There we go. That said 15 levels, it barely took anything off my bar because I have such a high level right now. I should go dump that in our experience obelisk. So anyway, this takes like three years, give or take, maybe four years for this to complete. So let's not look at this screen. Uh, so the next step is that we have to combine on an anvil, the broken spawner with the powered spawner. So let's do this. So that costs 30 levels, and I think that is actually 30 levels. It's not like the equivalent of what 30 levels would be. Uh, yeah, so this makes a powered spawner Crimson Knight. Let's do it. Cool. And then we have another powered spawner with our Wisp. So this will make a powered spawner Wisp. Nice. All right, so now the last one is just waiting for the Crimson Cleric to cook up over here. I think we have to wait like about a year and a half longer. Something like that. Yeah, it's just going to take a bit. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how this is going to work and how how often we will get the items <laughs> from the Crimson Knight. So I think I need to... Do we have an extra Tesseract? Probably not. Nah, I didn't think so. Yeah, the Powered Spawners, if I remember correctly... Uh, yeah, they have a thing. I think we can put the... Ooh, that's actually a smart idea. The Capacitor. Uh, so we want... Yeah, we want the this one, the level three. So can we make any of the double layers? No, of course we can't because we don't have any of that stuff made. So we need four of those, I think, to make two of these, to make one of these. Cool. All right, so there we go. There's a fully upgraded thingy for this one. We got spawn or capture. Yeah, we can remove the mob soul from this. That is right. Uh, all right, so the next thing is I need to get some power somewhere so we can spawn this and see just how fast this thing actually spawns. Uh, I think by now it's been four years and we can <laughs> combine this on the anvil and make our last power spawner. Cool, so let me get a few more things gathered together, guys, and we will check this out. Okay, guys, so here we are at the mob spawner. I have it turned off, so all of the cursed earth is inside those drop bridges down there. So I removed the witch spawner, and I just placed it over there next to its other witch spawner buddy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we really need most of this stuff going at this point, but for right now, I kind of want to test this out and see how this is all going to work. So down below, we have our spawner. This is the Thomcraft uh, Cultist Knight. <laughs> you can see that on the tooltip. Yeah, so this is the Cultist Knight. Uh, let's get this thing configured. So we want energy mode, receive only, main base power. Let's turn that on. Now, I believe it said that these things can only spawn in light level 8 or below, which appears to be incorrect, or maybe it doesn't matter when you have the powered spawner going. But yeah, we definitely are able to spawn these guys, which is cool. And it looks like that one just decided to go walk over there to the spike and kill himself. <laughs> Awesome. So what I was hoping to do is just turn this mob spawner on, use the fans to blow the Crimson Cultists where they should be. 
All right. Another thing I'm curious about is how many spawns are we going to get? It looks like we're only having five at a time, which I think is about the same for the default vanilla spawner. Like you can only have five of the same mob in a, I want to say like in a nine by nine of the spawner or something like that. Uh, but yeah, these guys are killing themselves. So anyway, let's get back to what I was going to do. Let's go ahead and cover this up, make it nice and dark in there. We'll turn on the mob spawner. Oh, are we getting guys spawning outside? That was something I wasn't expecting. Okay, well, apparently this is not going to work. <laughs> I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want these guys spawning out here. Yep, they definitely are spawning outside. That's not good. Okay, uh, let's get this thing turned back off then. Uh, let's turn that off first of all. So we don't ruin any of our cursed earth. We'll access this. And we will just turn that off. Okay, so this will run out of power eventually after it spawns a few more guys, I'm sure. Uh, let's go ahead and clean up these. <laughs> um, I haven't seen any void seeds drop yet, but it did say it was like a 20% chance. So we might just be getting unlucky. In fact, I'm sure we probably are. What's up, guy? How many of you are? Oh, man, there's a lot of you guys out here, aren't there? Well, there's a knowledge fragment. That's cool. Here's another one. Okay. Yep, no void siege yet. Well, this seems like a bust so far. These guys know about me. Let me come over here and let them get on the conveyor belts. Goodbye. Goodbye. That'd be pretty awesome if we got a mob soul for these guys. We could do the draconic evolution uh, spawner. All right, you know what? These guys aren't going to walk off. At least this last one probably won't. Let's just kill them. Knowledge fragment. Get over there. Touch that spike. Get wrecked. Okay, did we get anything worthwhile from these guys? Yes, we got two Void Seas, which is pretty awesome. We did get some of their armor, and we got the book, uh, Knowledge Fragment. I got a few more of those on me as well. It uh, does not look like we got a Crimson Colt uh, mob soul, but I'm sure we could if we let this thing go long enough. Unfortunately, we can't set it the way this is because this will spawn them outside of the area that I want them to be in. It's not like the vanilla spawner. Okay, so we're going to have to set up a room specifically for this. In fact, it might be an idea just to extend this thing up taller, have this kind of floating in the center, and just drop the Crimson Cultists down onto the Cursed Earth and have them do like the other mobs are. Okay, well, let me go ahead and make some changes to this. I do want this stuff voided. I'm sure this is going to take up a lot of space. Yeah, all these different pieces of armor. All right, let me do some changes, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I didn't really modify this too much. I just put another layer of marble on top, so I was able to put the the spawner and the tesseract in the right spot so the monsters can fit below it, and anything that spawns down here on the cursed earth will be able to fit uh, below the powered spawner there. Yeah, I didn't want to get things caught up and slow things down. Um, so I have the tesseract set to only receive power with the high redstone signal so we can turn it on and off with that lever. Um, anything else? Yes. So, <laughs> let's see. I have set on the filter over here. We are deleting all of these crimson occult items. We were, our chest was filling up with the stuff. These guys drop a lot of the thomium swords, which have, like, no durability. And same thing with the iron sword. So, we're getting rid of those as well. And then also, they're getting a, a lot of these books. Uh, you know what? Let's, can I turn off the sounds? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, look at this. We got a void sword. That's new. I wasn't even aware that we'd get one of those. Okay, so that's something that we're getting. I'll probably check that out. Lesser sapping. No idea what that means. Hmm. So, I wanted to set this filter here so we could start sending gold coins to our mob system. Or to our AE system. And that's item number 4498. You can see I searched for it down here. And these are all the items that are 4498. I wasn't aware that there were this many. I didn't know that all these things shared things. Uh, I was going to keep counting how many void seeds we had. But now that's all been sucked into the system. But yeah, apparently void metal ingots and quicksilver and like these taint things. All of those share that same number. And this thing is set to ignore metadata, MBT, or dictionary, mod owner, all this stuff. So, yeah, since we put gold coin in there, it's sucking all of these things into our system. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm just going to let this go for a while, and we'll collect some things. Looks like all the armor is being properly deleted, so I don't have to worry about our system being clogged up with that. 
But yeah, let's check out how many void seeds we have. Yeah, 53 of those. That is pretty good. So that's nearly a stack. So we can grab ourselves <laughs> almost two stacks of iron and start throwing that into our crucible. Uh, you know what? What happened to my wand? That was something I was looking for earlier. There it is. My super OP iron capped wooden wand. All right. So I set the crucible up over here. Over by these portals. Over by this... A great wood tree really yeah it's nothing fancy so we have the crucible right here and then i have uh transfer node liquids with a world interaction upgrade in there sucking in water so we are automatically filling up the crucible and then i have a carpenter's button here so we can just press the button and yeah that'll delete any goo that we get all right so let's go ahead and make ourselves our very first uh void metal ingot let's make sure there's nothing in there oh yeah there was stuff Okay, so we need to put in two iron ingots, I think is what the recipe is, and then a void seed. So, magnet is off, yeah. So, Q, Q, Q. There we go, guys. Void metal ingots. Aw, yeah. I think that is a perfect... Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's in there, so I can just do this all day long. Can I do, like, two at a time? One, two, three, four... Yeah, I don't know how many of these I can do at a time. I don't want to go too crazy with this. But yeah, let me go ahead and make some of this void metal up so we don't have to do this for a little bit. And we will move on. Alright guys, so now that we have all that void metal, the next thing I'd like to look at is uh, this enhanced charm of dislocation. This is the item where we can set waypoints or whatever and warp around using ender pearl charges i think is how that works it's been a while since i've used it but i believe you can set like almost unlimited destinations or maybe there is a limit like 20 or something like that i can't remember but anyway you can scroll through them and warp to anywhere using this guy and i am very interested in getting one of these so the charged draconian blocks these are things that we know how to get uh the charm of dislocation this is kind of like the advanced one except i think it's only one way travel uh, yeah, this is pretty easy. Just some blaze rods, some ender pearls, and then the wyvern core, which is a nether star. We've made plenty of those last episode. Uh, but then we need this awakened core, which is for the wyvern cores, the awakened draconian block, bedrockium, iridium, void metal, and the last piece of the puzzle that we do not have at this point is terra steel. So this is what I want to look at getting. I've never made terra steel before. At least I cannot remember making it. Um, so it says powerful metal derived from mana and nature. Extra info. You can get Terra steel by tossing the right materials on a terrestrial agglomeration plate. Is that how you say that? Maybe. Anyway, um, yeah. Okay. So let's look at this thing real quick. So this, you click on this. Is that, is that all there was? Yeah, there's not much in here. Okay, so we can go into the Batania book, and I think this will actually show us... Yeah, I was looking at this a moment ago, so we can get Terra Steel. And it shows you how to do all this. Uh, it shows you the recipe for this plate. So that is three Lapis Lazuli blocks, a block of Mana Steel, and then all of these different runes. Now, I was checking out the runes to make sure there was nothing crazy in these recipes, and it looks all pretty much the same as I've always done before. Uh, in the little bit of Batania that I've done. Uh, yeah, and then we have to put up this specific block pattern with the plate on top in order for these things to happen. And yeah, we put a mana pearl plus a mana diamond plus mana steel. And then it takes a lot of mana and then I'll turn it into a terra steel ingot. Okay, so this is where we need to go. So the next thing is we need to start making some more mana. Uh, <laughs> previously, we had set up those day blooms. And the last time I used Batania was over six months ago in Agrarian Skies 2. And at that time, the mod worked as you expected, as it always would, where day blooms, you make them, you place them, and then you're good to go for a long time. It's just a little trickle of mana uh, during the day daylight hours. But apparently there was a change to Batania since then. And those flowers decay over time. So you can't just place them and leave them. After I think it's three Minecraft days, they just vanish. They're gone. So I ended up making some endo flames here. We got three of them. It is really hard to see with all these other flowers around. Oh my goodness. Maybe I should just start breaking some of these other ones around here. Just so we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. Oh my goodness, flowers get wrecked. 
Okay, so we have these three end of flames here, and these things will suck up things like coal or blaze rods or coal coke or whatever. Uh, furnace burnable materials, they will suck those up and they'll start producing mana. So this is how I have produced a little bit of mana, but we need way more than this. Uh, like I was talking about previously, there's also other types of flowers. No, wrong button. This one right here. Um, generating flora. Oh, yeah. And the book also <laughs> was modified. So it says the caveats of passive generation. However, like if you didn't see this and you're just like, how do I make a day bloom? Because you used this before. You'll never know. <laughs> oh, maybe it says in here. I don't think it does. You'll never know that the, uh, the flowers will automatically delete themselves but yeah it is documented here but since i never thought to look here i didn't know about it but anyway like i was saying there's these uh begonia flowers that we can use that will eat bees and make mana there's the end of flames and we have lots of furnace burnable material so i can make a whole lot of these guys and just spread them around and we could go this way uh people are telling me that there were this flower here however you say that <laughs> it's like gormoralis or something uh, I think these eat food. Yeah, it says it's a hungry flower. So steak will take four seconds to digest. A carrot will take two. A loaf of bread will take two and a half and so on. Dang you, Thumbcraft. <laughs> um, so this looks a little involved. In fact, we have to make these runes in order to make this particular flower. So we might... Kind of skip that for now. I think I'm just going to make some more of these endo flames. These weren't too difficult. You just need the mana powder and then some brown petals, a red, and then a light gray. And we had all these flowers, but like I said, we have the seeds from Agricraft. So we can just make a whole lot of those really quickly. And then I can make a whole bunch of those flowers and hopefully make a lot of mana uh, to get this done. So I think that's what I'm going to work on now is making a lot of those endo flames. And just burning a lot of burn uh, furnace burnable material. Like right now we have almost 750 coal coke. And we can just go ahead and throw those at those flowers. Let them eat all that stuff. We have all of this coal and stuff. Yeah, we got plenty of things uh, to get this done. So I think that's the next step. So I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to make a bunch more endo flames. Hopefully make a lot of mana. And we'll be right back. So it turns out in order to grow those agricraft seeds, we're going to need Podzol. And in order to crossbreed, which we're going to need to do because they don't have any of the light gray ones, we need white plus gray. Yeah, we still need the Podzol for these seeds to be planted on. So <laughs> there's two ways of getting Podzol. Um, where are we? There's our home. We are down here. Yeah, there's two ways of getting the Podzol. Either we can craft it or we can go over to like a Mega Taiga biome or whatever. There's one up here, I think, and this has some natural spawned podzel. I just don't really feel like flying over there. Uh, so, eat spruce leaves, uh, plus dirt, I think is what the recipe is, and you can just craft some podzel. So, I'm just going to go ahead and collect a bunch of the spruce leaves from this tree. I'm going to make up some extra podzel, just in case we lose it or whatever. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to collect some of this stuff, make my own, and then we'll do some breeding. Oh man, guys, so I made the 10, 10, 10 light gray seeds. I made the 10, 10, 10 brown ones and then the red ones. So yeah, I've done a lot of the agri-craft stuff and I made a stack's worth of these endo flames. I think there's actually 65, no, there'd be 67 here. So yeah, we got kind of a lot of them hanging out. Um, I dropped like a stack of coal coke blocks and those all got sucked up by these things. And so now, now we have a decent amount of mana here. Um, and during that time, I also changed out our power spawner. I went to the, I went to the nether. I captured a blaze and I made a blaze powered spawner. So yes, we are now, uh, collecting blaze rods because we need a way to power those endo flames. And yeah, I think blaze rods are going to be a decent way to do it. So we are collecting a good amount of them right now. Uh, I saw we already captured one mob soul of the blaze. It looks like we're up to four now. We got 14 of the Cultist Night Mob Souls, so that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much else to note over here. Oh, you know what? I never really mentioned this before. Our Experience Obelisk is here, and we are collecting all of our experience right into it. So we have 446 levels, <laughs> according to uh, that screen there. Uh, so the next step that we need to do 
yeah, the very next step that we have to do now is to get this ter terrestrial agglomeration plate. I'm just going to call it a plate. <laughs> we have to get this thing now. So in order to get this thing, we need all of these different runes. So I have created a runic altar. This is very inexpensive. In fact, let's look at it real quick. So the runic altar, oh, it's all tar. Okay, so this thing right here, yeah, it's just some of this living rock that we created previously surrounding stone around that pure white daisy and then a mana pearl. And we have collected a lot of these mana pearls, I think, from the runic dungeons. I don't remember. We had like 30 of them in our system. So, yeah, I didn't have to make this. But normally you throw an ender pearl into, uh, yeah, the mana and then you get the mana pearl back out. It uses a little bit of mana. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we kind of were able to skip that step. So you can see my inventory is all full of stuff right now. Uh, yeah, we need to make this plate. So in order to do that, we have to do a rune of water. We get three of these for this recipe. So it's three mana steel, bone meal, sugar cane, a fishing rod, and a water shard. Okay, so I have... Oh, it's turning nighttime. I'll probably sleep. I have the altar right here. Let us go ahead and sleep real quick. Yep, yeah, we'll sleep real quick. So the the altar recipes aren't too bad. It's been a little bit of time since I've done this, but basically uh, I have like one recipe's worth of stuff right here. So basically we just have to right click each of these items on there and hopefully they don't all inventory tweaks back in here and ruin everything. So there is the water shard, three of the mana steel fishing rod, bone meal, and finally, a piece of sugar cane. Mm-hmm. So it made a sound. <laughs> I think, oh, you know what? Okay, I forgot. We are actually going to need, it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, we are going to need more of that living rock or whatever that is. Uh, rock. Yeah. Think in order for this to work, we have to place one, or is it three on top of the altar after that gets done processing? And I guess I'll have to remember how to do this. But yeah, if we come back over here, yeah, the recipe is set. I think we right click on this, or maybe I accidentally right clicked and that's why I made a noise. Uh, the next step is we have to bind this mana pool over here. So I think we bind the mana pool. How do we do this? Or maybe we bind the mana spreader to this. So it points over there. Yeah, so now this is going to be feeding mana from this mana pool over here. And there should be a progress bar, I think, appearing. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the size of that little spark thing in the center there. Uh, but eventually, we'll get enough mana over here where this thing will just work. <laughs> and I believe to finish it off, we just throw a piece of living rock and then right click on it. it it's something like that. So anyway, this takes a minute for this to complete, so let's wait for that to happen. All right, so it is done being sent to mana. You see there's like little lightning bolts coming off of this thing now. In fact, the little tool tip there where it has the green check mark, uh, to the right of that is the little picture of the rune, and that's like the little progress bar. Uh, you can kind of see that going around as it's being fed mana. So I think we just put that on there, and do we right click or do we have to click with the wand? Oops. Then maybe click with the wand. There we go. That's what we have to do. Okay, cool. So there is Rune of Water. So I need to do this. I think it's four more times. Yeah, we have to do the fire, the air, the earth, the water, and then a Rune of Mana. And this one requires a balanced shard. So I'm going to have to throw in a shard with some aspects into the Crucible and get that done. I don't think that'll be too difficult. Uh, this also requires the Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl, Mana Quartz. And that's just, you know... Uh, Nether quartz thrown in there to turn into the mana and then a diamond thrown in there. So it's nothing super special. But yeah, let me go ahead and get the rest of this stuff crafted up and we'll be back, guys. Well, here we go. All of that crafting has been done. Now, I did notice we only got one rune of mana, whereas we got three of these other type for every single craft. Yeah, this one you only get one of. Okay, so anyway, there's our, <laughs> our plate. Yep. So now we gotta make this like a little multi-block structure. It needs like a, a base for it to sit on for it to work. I've never used one of these things before, so this is brand new stuff 
to me. Although most things in mods like this are brand new to me since I don't really use them too often. Now, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know where the best place to set this thing. I guess right here is where we're going to do it since it's close to that mana spreader. I know if you put things far away from the mana spreader, like it starts losing. Yeah, there's a little bit of loss. So if we do that, now I think we have to bind the mana spreader to the pleat. That looks like it is bound to the plate. Okay, so now the next step was uh, we need to put a mana pearl, a mana diamond, and mana steel on there. Let's go and make ourselves a mana diamond. There we go. Magnet is turned off. So we'll do that plus this plus that. Yes. Okay, so it says that that requires half a uh, mana pool's worth of mana. So I assume while they're on the plate, there's something that keeps them from despawning. I don't know if this is going to take five minutes or if this is going to take an hour. Um, so anyway, it looks like stuff's happening. I'm just going to assume everything's going to go to plan. <laughs> I guess now we're just going to have to wait. I'm trying to look at that mana pool and see if I can see it going down. I guess we could use the, uh, the wand here. Yep, so this is going to take a minute. <laughs> it might be an idea to have another mana spreader nearby the and this mana pool so we can send more stuff at a time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the best way to do this stuff is. I'm very new to this mod, but yep, let's go ahead and wait for this to happen. All right, guys, so I'm learning some things about Batania. We got our Terra Steel ingot, but I had to make the craft a second time. Now, I assume with the mana spreader that we are using... Uh, it just ran out of time. It took too long and the items despawned. I think that's how that worked, but we did not get our Terra Steel. So then I did a little bit more research and it turns out, uh, sparks are probably the best way to transfer mana from a mana pool to something that can receive it, like this particular item here. In fact, it was so fast, I think it took like five or seven seconds for it to draw enough mana out of that pool to craft this item. Yeah, I was watching the, whoops. <laughs> too fast. I was watching the pool just go straight down and yeah, it sucked all that stuff out really, really quickly. Uh, so sparks are really cheap too. Let's see if we can do the NEI thing. No. Okay. Uh, whoops. Spark. Yeah. Sparks are really cheap. I've never used these before, but yeah, just a gold nugget, some petals and some blaze powder. You just stick one on top of a mana pool and one on a nearby item. And yeah, that's it. Don't need to use your mana spreader. This is really cool. I like it. Uh, like I said, it was able to craft that in probably like five or seven seconds. Super, super fast. Okay, so now we got our first bit of Terra Steel. <laughs> so now we can go back to what I'd like to do. And we are looking at making this Awakened Core for our Enhanced Charm of Dislocation. So we have all of the bits and pieces now. I just need to do the crafting and we can make this particular item. So yeah, let me go ahead and get this done and we'll be right back guys. So yeah, guys, I made myself three more uh, charge pads and they can definitely fill these draconium blocks a lot quicker. In fact, it's draining it so fast. Our energy supply over there, we can see the power is going down on those. So yeah, this is drawing a heck of a lot of power. But yeah, we can see like right now it is charging the wyvern flux capacitor pretty quickly. Yeah, and we could even do this faster, I believe, if we have more on the sides, like, pointed at me. Uh, but I don't really know if I want to do that or how that would look. In fact, I'm not really too sure if I like having this kind of offset since we're kind of on an odd number here and we have an even amount. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we have our charged draconium blocks. Let's go ahead and make this thing. Um, so we're doing... The Charm of Dislocation, the Advanced one. and I'm sorry, the Enhanced Charm of Dislocation. So we should have everything now completed, and here we go, guys. We did it. Hold Shift for details. Fuel, zero. Shift right click to open the GUI. Shift plus scroll to cycle destinations. Cool. Ender Pearls. We need a boatload of these things to go in here. This is the fuel, I do believe. So Shift right click, and, and I think you can do Shift... And then click this and it adds, yeah, 16 at a time. Maybe there's a way you can do more than that. I don't know. Out of vendor pearls. <laughs> okay. So we got a decent amount of fuel here. So what I should do is like mark this spot right like this. 
let's do this again we will see add new call this is that the name of the place or is that just the coordinates i think that's just the name uh so we're gonna call this home and we'll do commit cool so yeah there's our x y and z and we want to lock this so we can't accidentally overwrite that so where else would we want to go maybe spawn i'm not sure if we ever need to go to spawn or not but you know might as well put a location here and then we can get rid of those portals so let's do this one uh add new spawn uh commit lock it cool so now i can shift click between these two i guess shift scroll so let's go home nice let's go to spawn oh man that's awesome so I'm going to go mark a few more locations. Probably we're going to want one in the end. That's going to be a place that we're going to be visiting a lot. Uh, I might even put one over here at the stronghold just because it's kind of a distance to travel. Uh, yeah, all the different places that we want to go now, we're going to easily be able to get there. Oh, this is so good. Uh, I'm also going to get ourselves a soul bound and put on this. Don't lock up on me. All right, so let us do another shift click. We'll do... Add new, uh, the end, the end, commit, lock it, cool, let's go back home, sweet, <laughs> let's go to the end, oh, that is so good, guys, this is so good, I'm so happy about this, this has taken a long time, and this is such a great item, I'm gonna take some time and fill this thing up, so we won't have to worry about it for a very long time, but yeah, you know what, guys? We're going to wrap the episode up here. <laughs> ah, feels good getting this item. That's for sure. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.